Hello, and welcome to this meditation for the longest night. My name is Jenna Bowagi, and on behalf of First United Methodist Church in Ann Arbor, Michigan, I wish you all the joy of the Advent season. We recognize that that joy, however, may not always be easy to find. Whether this is the first or fortieth time you're celebrating without a loved one, or whether finances are making the gift-giving aspect an anxious thing, or whether it's just been a rough year in a world with a lot of sharp edges, the holly jolly Christmas may not be the best depiction of how you're feeling. The angels may sing joy to the world, but you may be wondering where to find that kind of spirit. In this short service, we offer the pattern of the Advent wreath, four candles lit over the four weeks preceding Christmas, as a way for you to consider where God is sitting with you in the less joy-filled places. Each candle has a reading from scripture and an invitation to consider an aspect of grief, loss, and hope in light of God's con continued presence. Whether you listen to this all in one sitting or one section at a time, I hope this gives you space to breathe in and out and acknowledge how the Christmas season is going for you. We release this on the winter solstice, the longest night of the year, in recognition that sometimes it may feel like everyone else has light and you have none. And we light candles together. We read together. And we listen together, knowing that the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Let Evening Come by Jane Kenyon let the light of late afternoon shine through chinks in the barn, moving up the bales as the sun moves down. Let the cricket take up chafing as a woman takes up her needles and her yarn. Let evening come. Let dew collect on the hoe abandoned in the long grass. Let the stars appear and the moon disclose her silver horn. Let the fox go back to its sandy den. Let the wind die down. Let the shed go black inside. Let evening come. To the bottle in the ditch, to the scoop in the oats, to air in the lung, let evening come. Let it come as it will, and don't be afraid. God does not leave us comfortless, so let evening come. Genesis 1, 1 through 5. When God began to create the heavens and the earth, the earth was without, without shape or form. It was dark over the deep sea, and God's wind swept over the waters. God said, Let there be light, and so light appeared. God saw how good the light was. God separated the light from the darkness. God named the light day and the darkness night. There was evening and there was morning, the first day. An Invitation to Contemplation in the beginning, God saw how good the light was, but did not banish the darkness. The balance of day and night, light and shadow, and joy and sorrow are foundational to creation. Take this moment to silently pray for a place in your life that may be out of balance and allow God to lead you to seeing that separation, naming, and rhythm are all good. Hear these words from Matthew 14, 13 through 20. 
When Jesus heard about John, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. When the crowds learned this, they followed him on foot from the cities. When Jesus arrived and saw a large crowd, he had compassion for them and healed those who were sick. That evening his disciples came and said to him, This is an isolated place and it's getting late. Send this crowd away so that they can go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said to them, There's no way to send them away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here except five loaves of bread and two fish. He said, Bring them here to me. He ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. He took the five loaves of bread and the two fish, looked up to heaven, blessed them, and broke the loaves apart and gave them to his disciples. Then the disciples gave them to the crowds. Everyone ate until they were full, and they filled twelve baskets with the leftovers. Hear this invitation to contemplation. We live in a culture of never enough. Never enough money, never enough entertainment, never enough news, never enough variety, never enough freedoms. Sometimes it is only a culture thing, and we have plenty, but want more and even more. Sometimes it truly isn't enough. One in nine people face hunger in the state of Michigan. Nearly 300,000 of them, children. In his grief after the death of his cousin, Jesus did not want to deal with the reality of other people's needs. Even Jesus has to rest, process, and weep. When he was able, he returned to the people and made a meal of so much more than loaves and fish. Take this moment to pray for those who do not have enough and to ask the Spirit to fill you in the places where you are empty. We know that the whole creation is groaning together and suffering labor pains up until now. And it is not only the creation. We ourselves, who have the Spirit as the first crop of the harvest, also groan inside as we wait to be adopted and for our bodies to be set free. We were saved in hope. If we see what we hope for, that isn't hope. Who hopes for what they already see? But if we hope for what we don't see, we wait for it with patience. In the same way, the Spirit comes to help our weakness. We don't know what we should pray, but the Spirit himself pleads our case with unexpressed groans. The one who searches hearts knows how the Spirit thinks because he pleads for the saints consistent with God's will. Hear this contemplation. So many of Paul's letters have a backdrop of pain, whether from his continued imprisonment or his frustration with the brand new church or his own issues of following a faith he had so fervently believed was wrong. His assurance in the letter to the Romans that the Spirit not only understands but helps us bear pain is not an erasure of it, 
Christians are not meant to be cheerfully happy all the time. Rather, it is a recognition that some seasons are bleak, some Christmases are too much, some New Year's dawn in shadow. We do not face any of that alone. God is listening when we cry out that it is too much. Take this moment to consider what it may change in to give yourself permission to tell the Spirit what pain you are in and to listen for the Spirit's eternal offer of hope. Hear this word from Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 5. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, made ready as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne say, Look, God's dwelling is here with humankind. He will dwell with them, and they will be his peoples. God himself will walk with them as their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. There will be no mourning, crying, or pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. Then the one seated on the throne said, Look, I am making all things new. He also said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. Hear this invitation to contemplation. John's vision of a time of peace and joy was written while he was in exile after running afoul of the Roman Empire's justice system. As a member of an oppressed people, John's idea of God's kingdom was a place where God, not Caesar, was in charge, where life, not death, was the order of the day. Two thousand years later, we still know death and mourning and pain and empire. Yet we also know that these words are trustworthy and true. God's dwelling is here with humankind. We wait in the season of Advent for the birth that happened so long ago, the birth that happens every year. God incarnate, God who lived and wept and grieved and shouted and hoped and feared and prayed and loved. We wait knowing we have been held since the very beginning in God's hands, even when it hurts too much. Take this moment to simply breathe in the reality that God is here, has always been here, will always 
be here, and that none of what you bring in this season is too much for God to hold with you, while we all wait for a time when there is no more mourning or pain. Hear this hymn for the hurting by Amanda Gorman. Everything hurts, our hearts shadowed and strange, minds made muddied and mute. We carry tragedy, terrifying and true, and yet none of it is new. We knew it as home, as horror, as heritage. Even our children cannot be children, cannot be. Everything hurts. It's a hard time to be alive, and even harder to stay that way. We are burdened to live out these days, while at the same time blessed to outlive them. This alarm is how we know we must be altered, that we must differ or die, that we must triumph or try. Thus, while hate cannot be terminated, it can be transformed into a love that lets us live. May we not just grieve, but give. May we not just ache, but act. May our signed right to bear arms never blind our sight from shared harm. May we choose our children over chaos. May another innocent never be lost. Maybe everything hurts, our hearts shadowed and strange. But only when everything hurts may everything change. Blessings on you, sibling. Blessings on your grief, that it may remind you of your capacity to love. Blessings on your anger, that it may remind you of your capacity to care for change. Blessings on your uncertainty, that it may remind you of your capacity to see different futures. Blessings on the space where blessings are unwanted. For here God sits with us and holds our pain. We leave the Christ candle unlit in our Advent wreath, because it is in this recording not yet Christmas. It is the place of already and not yet, where Christ was born 2,000 years ago, and yet we are still in the season of waiting. May you find peace in this season, and hope, and joy, and love. And may you remember that these things live alongside sorrow, and fury, and apathy, and hurt. All things are God's. And to God we bring everything, laying it at the side of a manger in which a newborn boy begins to learn how deeply complex being human is under the light of a bright, bright star. Merry Christmas, beloved. Breathe in and out, and know that the light is always, always here. <laughs> 